uh, uh, talking about sartorial elegance, um, <laughs> I, uh, uh, when, when Limbo arrived this morning, um, Keith didn't greet him. Um, with the hello or whatever, he said, you've got a jacket on. <laughs> no, I don't think. Well, uh, smart man. Thank you. Um, so, uh, you've been on the receiving end. Yep. Tell us about receiving <laughs> chaplaincy. Uh, did you receive it from him? I did. Oh, yeah, oh. and still, we're still okay. friends well, now, so it's all right. Tell us about the other chaplains yeah, in your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. So, um, one of the first times I met Andy, I, I wondered what he was doing at the club because uh, I wasn't a Christian at the time. And uh, Andy walked into the, I think it was the physio room, yeah. and I thought to myself, I'm not getting eye contact with him. You know, there's no way he's going to speak to me. But within, I suppose, 18 months, um, I, I came to know the Lord, and a good friend of mine, Darren Moore, uh, introduced me to Andy and Mick Mellows, who was a former player, but was assisting Andy. And and all I can say is that in the first uh, probably year of my of my journey. I, uh, I had to rely on these guys, you know, and, and, and there was an openness that I had, a trust with them that I'd never had before because the, the football world, you know, if you're different in any way, people exploit that. But these guys were genuine and, uh, and because they started to understand the culture, well, started to understand, they knew the culture, it helped me settle and be the person I needed to be in that dressing room. And, and like Andy, I, I suppose I got to a stage after a few years where I realised that that place, that club was my mission field. And, um, and then hearing the stories how Mickey and Andy had been praying for one Christian and then I think within four years we had nine. So you, you just saw something happening and I was more you know, excited about what was going on off the pitch than on the pitch at times because <laughs> And that is because we was in an amazing run. Like, yeah, we, like, we, uh, to be fair, we'd many Portsmouth supporters. Think yeah, that. no, that's no, true. No, that's no, true. true. No, no. I was going to say we were we were in an amazing run. You know, promotion to the Premier League and and had some amazing players in that team. But I was more excited about bringing friends along to sit next to Andy and, and Mick so that they could share the gospel with them. And um, and you can see that happening time and time again. So I had a good good uh, start with uh, Chapman. And like I say, we're still friends now. So he's all right. <laughs> And, and I mean, from what you're saying there, you would have found it incredibly, well, we would have found it almost impossible if you hadn't have had that support within the club. It would have been difficult. I, I don't know if I'd have been able to go to them with my concerns. And, you know, the, the obvious concern uh, in my first, uh, first year was the Christmas party. You know, the, the years before I'd been to Christmas parties and, you know, and lots of things were happening. And I had to go to the guys and say, look, I'm struggling. What do I do? And they gave me some really sound advice, and uh, and and one of the things they just explain about the Christmas party. No, better not. That's uh, <laughs> some ca some camera, so we can't. <laughs> it's like cases. Yeah, volavon cases and things like that. But um, <laughs> but the reality was that Andy and Mick encouraged me to be there because those are the times that the guys open up with conversation, and I had some amazing conversations with the guys, and I also set my stall out and said, look, you know, I'll come to the meal and I'll come out afterwards, but I'm not turning up in the middle. And they were like, oh, you know, you've gone big time on us, and who do you think you are? And, uh, but a year later, four other guys said, you know, we, we want to do the same as Linvoy. So it was, a, it, was, it, it was hard, but these guys supported me and uh, got me through those difficult moments. And, and you're now doing stuff with Christians in Sport, is that right? Yep, yep. So, um, so I've been, you know, involved with Christians in Sport from receiving support uh, over, you know, over eight years or so. And then a couple of years ago, um, I had the opportunity to, to work alongside Christians in Sport, with Christians in Sport, um, going into the clubs and looking out for the guys who need that support now. It's harder, it's tougher, because the, the spotlight on the guys, you know, it's... Uh, it's there, anything they do at that moment is reported straight away. So to be able to get alongside them and get alongside them, that's great. But even meeting players who, who are really not close to coming to the law, but having really deep conversations with them because they trust me from a, a space of um, understanding that I've been on that journey and, and you know, to be able to advise them in some way, they, they recognize that. And it, it comes back down to trust, you know, that's a simple thing. And, um, but it's been good, it's been amazing.